Hi everyone and welcome back for part three of our program options. I'm breaking these videos up into smaller entities because I want to make sure I explain and you understand each aspect of this actual um, field because this is very important to setting up your Metasoft system. So the next three tabs we're going to go over in this video, which are pretty quick, are payment application, agent reports, and the HIPAA ICD-10. Again, this is found under your file and program options and it sets the scene for your actual system. So under the payment application screen, you have several boxes that need to be checked or suggested to be checked. So you have mark paid charges complete, calculate disallowed adjustment amounts, mark completed claims done, calculate allowed amount and update allowed amount. Now I suggest, and it's really up to your office, that you mark paid charges complete so that you're not collecting or attempting to collect on things that have zero balances. And you also don't want your agent report to be crowded with things that have zero balances. So my suggestion would be to make sure that box is checked. Calculate disallowed adjustment amounts, meaning the amounts that are not allowed for that patient in the way per their insurance and you're already aware of it, it won't calculate that amount in their, um, their balances. That should be also checked. Mark completed claims done. This will save you so much time because I can't tell you how many doctors I've consulted for and claims have been completed, but no one in the system has marked them because they didn't have, if you have this box check, it'll mark automatically. Um, people sometimes don't check it because they want to go in manually and do it. However, if they become so busy or they get, um, uh, overwhelmed with the amount and maybe they forgot to do or did not do them all. When it comes to how much outstanding balances or how much outstanding claims, the numbers are going to be off because they're manually doing it. Just allow your system to automatically do it by checking this box. Calculate allowed amount. The only way you should have that box checked is if you have entered in your allowed amount. And your insurance company typically sends you out a um, an allowed fee schedule and you can go in manually and um, enter those or you can upload them into your system and they'll automatically be there. If you have that in the system, I would say calculate the allowed amount. If you're manually entering your allowed amount, then do not have that box checked. Update allowed amount, which means whatever allowed amount that you may have entered manually or electronically, by having this box checked, it allows you to manually go in there and update it if you need to. It's not locking it. Now, these default payment codes, these are codes that you create. They can be anything that you want them to be. Um, these codes are for inner office only it kind of allows you to know what they mean these codes do not go over to the insurance company at all it is simply for inner office so if you want cash when you're applying payments if you want cash to be the word cash then you create cash if you want it to be csh you can do csh and it that would mean cash but you create um what you want those default codes to be and if you uh, see here, they have a cash copayment and they have a patient prepayment and then they have just cash. It's for your office. Just make sure every one of your offices knows these codes so that they're aware of it and they don't use the wrong code. Um, check. Again, you can use the word check. There's different uh, ways of putting it. If you notice in the system, they have copay $5, copay $2, but these are all check payments. Credit card, um, they have CR, CD. You can just have CR pay. Um, right off, they use WROFF. -F. And again, you create these copayments. Um, these are manually created. These are default codes. So whenever you're trying to, in your transaction screen, post a payment or apply a payment that involve cash or copayments, these codes will automatically default. If you do not want to use these codes, you can just simply go to the drop down and choose um, the other codes. If you need to create new codes, then you would actually physically have to go in and create a, a new code. And you notice I was right clicking and that's not how you have to do it. You actually have to go into a different screen um, to create those codes. And I'll show you how to do those. Small balance write off. So if your doctor has decided um, that any patients that owe $20 or less, he's going to write off, then you will need to come here and create a code for small balance write off. And in this case, we're using SBWO and the maximum write amount. If it's 20, then you will need to change it to $20. So anybody who has $20 or less, 
um, that owes us, we're going to automatically write it off because the doctor says he doesn't want to waste the time of collecting it. So the next tab is your aging report. So in this screen, it tells you how or gives you options of how you would like your aging report to be set up. So with the patient aging, meaning how much money does the patients have outstanding to the office, you can either do it by the transaction date or the date of the first statement. My suggestion, my suggestion would be the transaction date. So if you want it from 30, 60, 90 from the day of the patient, like say maybe 10 patients came in on the first, you want it from 30, 60, 90 from the first. So all those patients that came in those days who have outstanding balances will show up. Um, doing it from the first statement can be kind of difficult because, um, you don't know exactly when that statement, you have to really keep track of your statement dates and things of that nature, but transaction date just makes it easier. And then this allows you to choose the, the range zero to 30, 31 to 60, 61 to 90. If you want to do zero to 20, uh, 31 to 50, you can just input those numbers. And then the other column is insurance aging. Um, this allows you to give a date range and insurance agent is based on how much money you have outstanding from the insurance companies that you have not received. The next tab is HIPAA slash ICD-10. So here is more of a security type tab. So you should have this auto log off button filled out where your system will automatically log off a certain amount of minutes. Um, worn on unapproved codes is to me. Many people don't use it, but I think this is important. This is if you try to use a unapproved um, code, CPT, ICD-9, ICD-10, ICD HICPICS, it will give you a warning say that code is not an approved code. Here is the uh, icing on the cake. If you're using a old system um, and you're trying to convert to ICD-10, you need to make sure you're under this tab and you change it to your default diagnosis code should be ICD-10 not ICD-9. This is where you do the ICD-10 settings and I'll show you the difference. I'm going to save that and I'll go in and show you um, the different aspects of the ICD-10 code and then what the co-payment codes look like and then an agent report. So let's save that. Okay, so we're going to go back in our transaction screen. I'm going to pull up a patient. So now let's try to use those default codes. If I'm trying to post a payment here and say it's cash. So if I go here and I click cash, you should see cash here. Cash payment. Then I can go ahead and post. And then I would need to just apply that $5 and I would be okay. So if I change this to check, it gives me that same default code option that I had before, which is check. If I wanted to go to write off, I can go to write off and it'll give me um, an option as well. So these are just examples of what it will look like. So I'm going to delete this to make sure I didn't mess up any payments on here. Okay, so another thing I want to show you was the IC10 codes. So let's say if I was creating a new charge up here. And I'm going to add an ICD-10 code versus the ICD-9 because I just defaulted my system um, to ICD-10. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to do my ICD-10 lookup because in this system it has not been set up for ICD-10. So let me go back and I'm going to save it. And I'm going to go back and do our ICD-10 setup. And this is how it says 99213. It's not a HIPAA approved code. Do you wish to use it anyways? So I'm going to do no. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to set up my ICD-10 mapping. That way you can see the ICD-10 codes in use. So we're going to go to our mappings. We're going to select all codes. And we're going to create it. So now it says that it was successfully created. So we come back to my screen here. And I'm going to go back to my code. And I'm going to find one that already has the ICD-10. So I'm just going to do routine. So a routine visit will be V70.0 and ICD-9. 
but in ICD-10, it's Z00.00. So I'm going to choose that code, and I'm just going to use one code completely, and I'm going to delete this one out because I don't need it, and then I'm going to do Save Transactions. Again, it reminds me about that 99213 code, which I know is a, a valid code. And then again, it tells me about the copay. So this will be how you would use that. So if I close this out and if I go do an agent report, you go to reports and then agent because I just want to show you. So we did patient agent, which is 0 to 30. Let's see what that report looks like. It'll just bring up a preview. And I'm going to choose a date from, let's see. And click OK. So there's no data for that date, but do you see that it has 0 to 30, 31 to 60, 6190, 91, and so on. So that's what I want you to see. And then also let me do an insurance agent report to show you what that looks like. And again, with the insurance agent, you can do primary, secondary, or tertiary. Depends on um, how many patients you have or what time frame you're looking at. So I'm going to use today's date. Click OK. And this is what it will look like for insurance. So it has the 0 to 30, 31 to 60, 6190, and so on. It tells you from 0 to 30 how much they have outstanding. Um, how much they have for 31 to 60 and so on. In this case, this patient right here has more money out um, that's over 121 days. So that's money that you may not get from an insurance company if this was a true situation. So until next time in our fourth video, um, I will talk to you soon.